The Lindbergh baby kidnapping was a terrible crime that shocked the globe amid the 1930s optimism. Famous pilot Charles Lindbergh and his wife Anne Morrow were plunged into a nightmare when the little boy was kidnapped. A whole country held its breath as it was engulfed in a tragic tale of mystery and sorrow. An eerie tapestry is created by the investigation's processions, the kidnappers' evasive taunting and the race against time. Join us as we experience the crime of the century, the kidnapping of the Lindbergh baby, a mystery that forever marred a time of innocence. The world held its breath as darkness came upon the Lindbergh household in East Amwell, New Jersey, on a momentous day recorded in history, March 1st, 1932. Charles Augustus Lindbergh Jr., the adorable 20-month-old child of aviation pioneers Charles Lindbergh and Anne Morrow Lindbergh, was abducted from his cot in a heartbreaking turn of events, leaving a nation in sorrow. On May 12th, tragedy would rear its icy head once more when a truck driver found the little Lindbergh's lifeless body, bringing grief to everyone. As the search for the evil spirit responsible for this horrible murder grew more intense, suspicion eventually centered on a German immigrant carpenter named Bruno Richard Hotman. Its seriousness earned it the title The Biggest Story Since the Resurrection, and legal historians dubbed it one of the renowned trials of the century. The ensuing trial captivated the entire globe. After Hotman's guilt was established, she was given the death penalty for first-degree murder. Even as the appeals failed, his cries of innocence resounded, and on April 3, 1936, he was put to death in the electric chair at the New Jersey State Prison. The fallout from this horrific incident inspired Congress to pass the Federal Kidnapping Act, also known as the Little Lindbergh Law, which made it illegal to transfer kidnapping victims across state lines. As a result, the Lindbergh baby kidnapping became a symbol of both human malice and a nation's steadfast pursuit of justice, leaving a permanent imprint on history. Let's delve into the investigation process. The Lindbergh baby kidnapping case involved a series of investigations, including a ransom note, a ladder, and a sketch artist. The ransom note had numerous spelling and grammar irregularities, and the police found that the kidnappers wore gloves and had cloth on their shoes. The note also contained two interconnected blue circles surrounding a red circle, with a hole punched through the red circle and two more holes to the left and right. The FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover contacted the Trenton, New Jersey Police Department, stating that they could contact the FBI for resources and assistance if needed. The FBI did not have federal jurisdiction until May 13, 1932, when the President declared that the FBI was at the disposal of the New Jersey Police Department and that the FBI should coordinate and conduct the investigation. On March 4, 1932, Gaston B. Means, a man suspected of being the kidnapper, discussed with Evalyn Walsh McLean and promised to help retrieve the child. Means convinced McLean to give him $100,000 to obtain the child, but McLean refused, leading to his arrest and sentence of 15 years in prison on embezzlement charges. Violet Sharp, suspected as a conspirator, died by suicide on June 10th before her scheduled questioning for the fourth time. Her involvement was later ruled out due to her alibi for the night on March 1, 1932. In 1933, Franklin D. Roosevelt announced that the Federal Bureau of Investigation would take full jurisdiction over the case in October 1933. The kidnapping of Charles Lindbergh's baby was a massive conspiracy, with military colonels, organized crime figures and the FBI investigating the case. The kidnapping was facilitated by John F. Condon, a Bronx personality and retired school teacher who offered $1,000 to the kidnapper to turn the child over to a Catholic priest. Condon received a letter from the kidnappers who authorized Condon to act as their intermediary. Condon placed a classified ad in the New York American stating that money was ready and a meeting was scheduled with a representative of the kidnappers who claimed to be a Scandinavian sailor. Condon promised to return the baby's sleeping suit and burn the package if the package were dead. On April 1st, Condon received a letter stating the ransom was ready, packaged in a wooden box with gold certificates. Condon was given a note by an unknown cab driver who informed him that he had raised only $50,000. The child's body was discovered in a grove of trees near the Lindbergh home, and the crime was suspected by Violet Sharp, a British household servant. Condon's actions were criticized for being exploitative, and he agreed to appear in a vaudeville act regarding the kidnapping. Over 30 months, ransom bills were spent in New York City, with many being spent along the Lexington Avenue subway route. 
A Manhattan bank teller noticed a gold certificate from the ransom and a New York license plate number. Richard Hotman, an immigrant with a criminal record in Germany, was arrested and found over $14,000 in his garage. Hotman denied any connection to the crime and was indicted in the Bronx for extorting the $50,000 ransom from Charles Lindbergh. He was later indicted in New Jersey for the murder of Charles Augustus Lindbergh Jr., who was moved to Hunterdon County Jail. Numerous books have argued for Hotman's innocence, citing inadequate police work, Lindenberg's interference, ineffective counsel and weaknesses in witnesses and physical evidence. Ludovic Kennedy questioned the latter's origin and the witness's testimony. Jim Fisher's book, The Lindbergh Case, includes Hotman was guilty but questions execution. Ellis Parker's 1936 confession led to a temporary stay of execution for Hotman. Another theory suggests Lindbergh accidentally killed his son in a prank. The Lindbergh baby kidnapping serves as a haunting reminder of innocence and a quest for truth. The case serves as a cautionary tale and a symbol of United Nation against malevolence. The lessons learned from the crime remind us that perseverance and resilience can guide us towards a better future, even in the darkest shadows. If you found this video interesting and want to know more things like this, stay tuned. For that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, comment and share our videos.